Welcome to the Hopkinton Historical Society right here in the Long Memorial Building. Maybe you've driven by this beautiful historic building, but you've never taken a chance to stop in and see what they've gotten inside. Well, I'm telling you, we've got a special treat for you. It's the highlights of the World War I exhibit that's going on right now till September 1st. But even if this exhibit isn't here, you've got to stop by and check out the wonderful architecture and period pieces that they have in here. It's definitely worth your time. And if you're considering membership or supporting local nonprofits, definitely put the Hopkinton Historical Society on your list. I'm joined by Heather Mitchell, the Executive Director, and we're going to talk about a couple favorite pieces here in this World War I exhibit. Thank you for joining us. Sure, sure. Thank you for, thank you for coming here. Um, one of my favorite things from our summer exhibit is a collection of Liberty Bond posters that we have. Mm -hmm. And so we have 29 of them in our collection, and uh, they're sort of in various various states, uh, some are in better shape than others. But these are real, these aren't necessarily reproductions. Oh no, these are all, these are all absolutely real. And so what's, what's fascinating for us as we look through these posters that we have is that they really used every psychological device possible in order to, in order to convince people to buy Liberty Bonds. Mm -hmm. So I mean it was very, they, they had, there were five Liberty Bond issues all together, but they were very persuasive and, and they used, I mean really a lot of sort of psychological tactics. So for example, you might see some that has a scantily clad young woman on it mm -hmm. buying, saying, you know, buy more Liberty Bonds. Hey, sex sells, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you have others that, that question your patriotism. You know, they say, are you 100% American? Prove right. it by buying a Liberty Bond. You know, others tug at the heartstrings. You know, they include Boy Scouts or small children. So it's, it was really, really interesting to look through and, and, and see the different the different types of liberty bonds and others, you know, really try to try to scare you presenting the, the German as the Hun and, you mm -hmm. know, as almost not actually human. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because we grew up in a world right now where we're constantly inundated by images and they're all carefully crafted to fit on our phone or our tablet or things like that to elicit us to buy something or support something. But back then you have to think of perhaps the creative genius of some of these people working, you know, in the propaganda war offices and things like that where they knew they just had a piece of paper and they have to reach different audiences. So we think of what emotions are they trying to elicit with certain symbols or certain fonts or things like that. So it's a nice stroll down memory lane and also to see the power of advertising. Absolutely. Another thing that you have here that we've been sort of discussing, it's on you know, the sadder side of the war, was the influenza epidemic that sort of spread through the area at the time, and it really did affect Hopkinton. It really did, it really did. Uh, the, the primary wave was in the fall of 1918, mm -hmm. and what was really interesting about the influenza pandemic was that usually with, with that kind of illness, you expect it to affect the very young and the very old. Well, this pandemic was different in that it affected primarily healthy people in their 30s and 40s. Right. And so they would they would contract it, and then typically within a week or so they would have died. And so, uh, according to reports in some newspapers that we have from the time, um, at one point there were 70 people that had been ill with influenza, and we know that eventually 13 people from Hopkinton died from influenza, including the the principal at the high school. And in those days when the town was even much smaller in population, that's a sizable portion. You know, we know what happens during flu season, watch your hands, use your hand sanitizer, avoid crowds, but they had to actually shut down places in town to prevent the spread. Right, right. So schools were closed, um, churches were closed, and so I'm, you know, and I, I'm not even sure how information was passed along about, right. the, about influenza because the most places where people would gather would, were closed down. And these are just two of the items that uh, when you come into this World War I exhibit, you're sort of immersed in the other side of the war, the home front, so to speak. You've got the Victory Garden out front. Uh, you have some uniforms here. You have some beautiful Americana on the walls. Uh, you also see things like, I love the feature of the nurses. You've got another side to the story because we forget just as hard as the boys were fighting on the front, the women were dealing with the aftermath of those casualties constantly. And you have some wonderful homages to them. Absolutely, absolutely. Nurses played a huge role in it, and for many women, it was their only opportunity to participate on the on the war front. And so there were many many women that did that, including including one from Hopkinton. Oh, we thank her for her contribution. We thank you and everyone here at the Hopkinton Historical Society for presenting the World War One exhibit that's going to be here all the way through September first. <laughs>